Well, hi everybody. So the 40th anniversary of Microsoft Flight Simulator came out. I thought we'd have a quick look at the right flyer here. Now, there are really two reasons why I wanted to do this. One of which is because if you were like me and you read that thing in the loading menu about the catapult, you got in here and you went, what catapult? The way that you spawn that in here is you're going to press toggle water rudder and it will spawn the catapult in here. The other way that you can take care of that is uh, inside the what I'm going to call the cockpit, and I'll show you that here in a second. The other reason that I decided to do this is because I wanted to see if I could beat Wilbur's record for a flight of 852 feet and was it, about a minute of flight time. So I came here to a place called Pierce Ferry. Pretty sure this is still in Arizona. We're pretty much at the eastern end of Lake Mead. And this runway here is about 3,300 feet. So if we can make it to the end of the runway, I will have beaten Wilbur's record. Now the other way to bring the catapult in here is to just kind of click on this little sort of sticky note here. And that'll spawn the catapult in for you. I'm going to go ahead and put a full fuel load in here. I'll go ahead and pull the propeller. Now... The catapult is kind of weird. Sometimes it shoots you off almost immediately, and sometimes it it takes a second. It does not seem to respond at all to the throttle. There really isn't the throttle for this plane, so I mean, it's not surprising, but there was something in the loading menu about the catapult 100% throttle. It didn't seem to have any effect. So, just be aware that once the engine's going, you've got the catapult in here, it's going to pretty much just randomly decide to shoot you off there. Either way, it's relatively easy to kind of keep in the air. It is very, very susceptible to the wind. I would say that you probably don't want to put too many, or too drastic of a pitch movement into this thing. A little bit tends to do quite a bit for this thing. Your top speed, you're looking at something like 26 miles an hour. And the stall speed is going to be somewhere around like 19. It is fairly easy to actually stall this thing. I don't know if I mentioned how long of a flight time you get with a full fuel load, but you're only really looking at something about like seven minutes or so. But it is quite fun to fly in a straight line. It doesn't turn very well. And uh, other than that, it is kind of nice that they put it in here. I mean, it is technically kind of the first, kind of the first plane. So. We are coming up to the end of the runway here. That would be about 3,300 feet. We'll see how far we can take this. This is part of the reason why I chose this airport. So we end up going off this cliff. There's another slight tidbit, I guess, of information here, which is that for some reason when you start this thing on the runway, a Sobo has the plane trimmed up 5 degrees. I don't know why. I don't even think there is a way to trim this thing in real life, but it, it is, and it does seem to fly a little bit better if you, you zero that out.
Alrighty, well we're out of fuel. So we're pretty much just gliding the rest of the way. Well, we probably would have broken the thing in real life. And I guess we're going to slide back here quite a ways. So anyway, that's pretty much it. That plateau up there is pretty much where we came from. So I'm going to go do a little bit of math here and figure out if I can find out how far we actually flew here. Alrighty, well, I did the math. It was a little hard to do without a constant speed, so I kind of routed everything down to about 23 miles an hour. It was about 10 minutes worth of flying time, and that comes out to about 3.2 miles or so. Which is a little hard for me to believe, because it seems like it's a lot further away from that plateau in the background there than, than that. But either way, thanks for watching, everybody, and I guess I'll see you all next time.